So, hi. I am Tommy, and here I will demonstrate a automatic voltage stabilizer circuit that I have built. Um, this is an automatic voltage stabilizer that will provide an approximately constant output lying between 200 and 230 volts when the input voltage varies from a range here that is given as 135 volts to 270 volts. So, assuming this is in initially turned off and that I just turn it back on, there's an initial delay before which the seven segment turns on and that I'll repeat again and you can see that there's a delay while that LED is on which shows that there's a delay and then this turns on showing that the entire circuit has been turned on. Um, this is the main control board consisting of the power relays and this is the auto transformer, uh, the relays control, which tapping the input voltage is provided to and that subsequently steps up the voltage to provide an approximately uh, constant output voltage that is displayed on this voltmeter. Uh, this meter here displays the input voltage and this displays the input voltage as sensed by the microcontroller. So now as you can see here there is a discrepancy between the input voltages. This shows 108.6 and this shows 107, 108. So this means that there is a small discrepancy in what the mic in the voltage that the microcontroller is sensing and the actual voltage. Now okay now this is 110 and that's 108. So to fix this what we need to do is we initially calibrate the microcontroller. What we do here is there is a calibrate option by shorting these two wires and then resetting the microcontroller. Microcontroller enters calibrate mode. So, so in that mode what I can do is I can adjust the voltage at any to anything I want and then I can see the voltage on the input AC meter and adjust this variable resistance over here so that this reflects the same voltage as this by doing this I am saving the value into the microcontroller EE pre -ROM. and here it is. so this shows 112.9 volts is 113 volts this is 113 volts so all I need to do is I need to open these and then the circuit turns on there's a delay and now it turns on and as you can see now that this is 113 volts this is 113 volts so the calibration has been done now if I want to recalibrate this I will have to short this and reset the microcontroller to enter calibration mode if it's shorted now it doesn't matter because it will not enter calibration mode until the microcontroller is reset the microcontroller here is a PIC 16 f 873 a made by Microchip Incorporated. It's readily available in the market. It's, not, it's a relatively inexpensive controller with a bunch of important peripheral features that can be employed to make a nice uh, voltage stabilizer circuit here. Now, this circuit, I don't know if you can tell in the video, there are three LEDs over here. I can turn it off and you can see it better. There are three LEDs over here, if you can see. The one on the left here shows that this is for delay. So while it's in delay mode, this LED will turn on. The one in the center shows that it's operating in normal conditions. The one on the right shows that it is in high or low cut mode. This will uh, The high cut mode occurs when the input voltage is greater than a pre-programmed uh, voltage. This I have set to be 270 volts and the low cut is again uh, the low cut mode is entered when the input voltage drops below a specific set point, pre programmed set point, and this has been selected as 130 volts when starting and 125 volts when started. I will demonstrate this right now. So, if I turn this back on, that's delay. It turns on, it's 112.6, this is 112, and this meter can be assumed to be accurate to within plus minus one volt once calibrated. So if you can see now this is this high low LED is on which means that it's in low cut mode that is also because this is below the set set point of 125 volts or 135 volts that I have shown and I will just demonstrate that right now if I turn it back up if I keep on turning the voltage turning it up it's still off and you can tell that because there is no output over there and this third LED is on the third LED shows that this is in high or low cut mode currently in low cut mode. If I keep on turning it back up, once this reaches 135 volts, the circuit turns on. The center LED turns on. You can see this says 135.3. This shows 135. This shows 195 volts. This When this turns on, it means that the output is on. I heard the relay click. I don't know if you can hear that on the video. 
and this is what I meant by a high cut. The high cut voltage here has been set to be 135 volts when starting. And now to turn it, the low cut, my, my bad, that's the low cut. The low cut has been configured for 135 volts. Now that is when starting up. If I am turning it, turning the voltage down, even when it's below 135, the circuit stays on. And I can keep turning it down until it reaches 125 volts. And once it goes, goes below, the output goes off again because that is the low cut range when uh, operating. So to turn it back on, I need to go up and cross 135 volts, it's on now. So now I can just keep on moving this up and as you can see, the output will change accordingly throughout the entire range from 135 volts to 270 volts. As you can see, the relay switch tapping is there and the output will stay after it crossed 140 volts always between 200 and 235 volts ish depending on the tolerance of the auto transformer and the windings etc but throughout the entire range of over 140 volts to 270 volts input the output will always be greater than 200 volts so when um, i keep on turning this you can see that the output changes and it's approximately around 220 now i've switched so that's 210 so as you can see the output voltage is, has risen up to a 33 and the output is still good the input voltage is 233 it keeps on going so okay so that is as far up as my variac goes the variac this is the variac i've used for altering the input voltage so even with an input voltage of 264 volts, the output is 231 volts. That is perfect for running any equipment designed for a 220 volt main input. So this has demonstrated that over the entire range, you can expect an output greater than 200 volts and less than 235 volts. So this is perfect for any equipment designed for 220 volt input and can be operated from an input range of 135 volts, 140 volts for 200 output. and 270 volts that was the the normal operating mode the high cut is set for 270 volts but unfortunately my variac does not allow me to go any higher than 264 volts so i cannot demonstrate the high cut right now the other thing here is that as you can see these are the four relays and here you can see the different transformer tappings this black wire from the transformer this is the common neutral for the transformer the zero volt tapping if you may call it with reference to that this is 160 volt 65 volt tapping and each of these are in 25 volt increments so the next one which is the orange one this is 190 volt tapping the next one is 215 volt tapping this one is 240 volt tapping these tappings are connected here on the circuit and the relay switches the input and output between the tappings the relays can switch the input between the 165 the 190 and 240 volt tappings and the input switching is done by these two the first two relays like this one and this one this one the third one controls the output tapping output switching which takes the output either from the 215 volt tapping which is this one or the 240 volt tapping and the fourth relay here controls the output on and off so even if those control the tapping if this is off there is no output and when this is on there is an output over here these four relays along with these four tappings and the neutral of the transformer provide the switching required to the transformer tappings to provide a relatively constant output within an acceptable limit or range this blue set of wires this, these two from the transformer tapping provide the auxiliary supply for the circuitry and it's provided here rectified filtered over here uh, regulated with 7805 and provided to the microcontroller provided a constant 5 volt supply to operate the microcontroller and the uh, 7 segment display here the input voltage is sensed by the microcontroller by converting the input to 20 volt mains to dc by using this these four diodes which act as bridge rectifier then filtering them with this bulk capacitor and then stepping that down with a voltage divider uh, circuit over here with all these resistors. Each of these are in series to reduce the power dissipation per resistor. This voltage divider network is used to step down the mains voltage rectified to DC to a level acceptable by the microcontroller. This is usually within 5 volts and the voltage 
divider output will be well below that for normal operating modes. To prevent the microcontroller from getting damaged in case of over voltage or spikes, there are, if you can see over here, there's one diode over here and another one over here that clamp the uh, input voltage to the microcontroller to either one diode voltage drop above the supply voltage or one diode voltage drop below the ground level. So this makes sure that under conditions of spike or transients or high voltages, the microcontroller input is not damaged due to over voltage from the voltage divider network. These transistors are used to drive the relays and the corresponding signal sent from the microcontroller which is operated at 4 MHz and powered off an external crystal oscillator. This variable resistor is the one I had initially used for calibrating the microcontroller. Once calibrated the required the microcontroller, the calibration is required for the microcontroller to detect the difference between the expected theoretical value at the voltage divider output and the real value present at the output and this offset is saved as a constant multiplier value it's a floating point value and the microcontroller does floating point calculation in software to compensate for that loss and it is saved in EEPROM in the EEPROM memory in the microcontroller and each time the microcontroller starts up and if it's not in the calibrate mode that value is loaded from the EEPROM and on every subsequent voltage calculation that value is used to do the offset and calibrate and offset any difference in the theoretical expected value and the original practical value due to different reasons such as um, the, the most common of which is the resistance, resistor tolerance and heating etc. Uh, the microcontroller drives the 7 segment display here, it's a 3 digit 7 segment display. The decimal point as you may notice is not used so that 7 segments used for, from A to G and there are 3 digits here. For each of those seven seg um, segments to drive them, the microcontroller uses this, these transistors, These all of these are NPN, seven of these NPN transistors in a common collector mode as emitter followers to amplify the current required to drive them because the microcontroller current driving capacity may not be enough to fully light them and the output voltage may drop when the current requirement is too high. So these transistors acting as emitter followers in the common collector mode are used for increasing the current. There are three transistors over here with higher current capacity used to select which uh, display to send the signal to. So in the all of these, there are 10 transistors here all used just for the display and all of the control signals are coming from the microcontroller. The microcontroller uses in this circuit the peripheral I.O. module for all the input and output control. Um, it uses the ADC for input voltage reading from the voltage divider network and it uses the EEPROM memory for saving the calibration done initially at startup from the calibration mode. Uh, you can see multiple capacitors on this circuit here. All of them are provided for filtering at different stages of the circuit. Um, there are different diodes. This, uh, the microcontroller, as said previously, is powered off the 7805 regulator, whose input comes from the uh, this AC voltage that is regulated, and the this input voltage th that is regulated DC, that's unregulated DC from the AC input goes then after four diode drops to power the relays because the relays don't have a strict voltage requirement no voltage regulators needed for the relay and if you've noticed like there is an output all the voltage ranges meaning that the relays work sufficiently well all the way from down under 120 volts to up above 270 volts um each of these relays has obviously an accompanying free will diode to capture the inductive kickback to make sure it does not destroy the transistors and this is the auto transformer as mentioned before it has those five tappings to which the relay selects the input and output voltage and thus ma make sure that the output is maintained well within acceptable limits through a large input voltage range and the input voltage is displayed here which can be nicely mounted on a box or however required and based on this the micro does all the calculation and displays it here which makes it look pretty nice and it also gives a visual feedback of what the microcontroller is doing and as for the operation of that that is 
about it and that's the voltage stabilizer which works from the entire range that I've mentioned from about 135 volts to 270 volts. This is the PIC 16 f 873 a microcontroller and it I have programmed that physically using the Picket 3 programmer and in circuit debugger. Uh, I did not use the in circuit debugger per part of this Picket 3 for this project as I only needed it for programming. For programming I have only I have used the micro C compiler. I have loaded the program from the computer and the, the micro C pro for PIC compiler can be used for this and it's freely available on the micro C website um, with certain limitations but and I've used the PIC 3 programmer for downloading the program off the computer onto the microcontroller here and subsequently operating it as required. Thank you.